well. Uh, 68,000 was roughly based on the IBM 370. Uh, Motorola has admitted this, and, um, and if you look at it, there are a lot of similarities. And I thought, if IBM builds a personal computer, it will of course use the Motorola 68000. Well, uh, I was very disappointed to discover from the rumors that they had chosen Intel. And uh, that meant two things. Number one, they were going to essentially start their you know, uh, project with what I consider an obsolete processor. And uh, I knew that Apple was a long ways from the 68,000 base machine at that point. There were not even rumors on the horizon. And I thought, well, I have time to get the 68,000 built and maybe, you know, sell it to the development team. So uh, I started talking to my friends about this, Bill, Bill Bonham, Bob Needham. I was working with on a daily basis, and so we had those conversations. Also, Lonnie Klein and Dave Klein, my cousins, uh, spent a lot of time uh, uh, with them as well. Um, so I had the idea for the computer. I had to figure out how do I turn it into a company or a product and then a company. And uh, the first thing I did is went to the uh, chairman of the board of Lynch Communications. And I said, I have an idea for a product. And we sat around and I discussed it with him. Um, he seemed, you know, sympathetic but had no appreciation for what I was talking about in terms of who was going to buy it and what it was really for and didn't it have capacity far beyond what anybody would need anyway, so what's the point? And basically I didn't sell it. So there's one other alternative in the Reno area. It's a company called IMS uh, International who got, a, got started building S100 memory boards in the late 70s. And they had Intel products, and I, I knew the owners of that company, Al Fegan and Don Lear. So I went down to Don, who really was the guy who kind of spearheaded the technology. And uh, I gave him my pitch on what became the Sage Computer. He was very impressed with it. As a matter of fact, he was looking for a product to take him out of the S100 world at the time. So he was, he was very intrigued with my ideas. Uh, asked me to bring the team down, and the team I put together originally, uh, Bill Bond was going to do the system software. Bob Needham had been running the prototype board shop for Lynch at the time, so he knew layout, he knew how to do tape up, so Bob was going to do our tape up. Paul Lima, with the, uh, the best resume, like I say, from MIT and Bell Labs, he was going to do my hardware design. I'm, I'm, you know, historically, I played with hardware a lot, I spent most of my time in system software. Uh, I, I'm, I always consider myself a good hardware design critic. I always tell the hardware engineers where they screwed up. So uh, Paul is going to be the guy who really was going to help me get through that process. Um, anyway, brought the team down. Don liked the idea. He liked the proposal. Uh, we agreed on royalties, essentially, for the design work and um, started putting a contract together. He agreed to it. Uh, at the time, I'd been living in San Francisco doing some work for General Electric. And uh, we now finished that up. Next weekend, I got back to Reno. Everything had changed. Uh, Don Lear had hired Paul Lima from Lynch Communications and taken my hardware designer and said, we don't need you guys anymore, goodbye. And that was the end of my project at that point, which was obviously very disappointing. Plus I lost the best resume I had in my business plan. So uh, backed away, got my airplane, flew down to Grand Canyon, did some hiking, thought about it, you know, took a vacation for a week. Got back and decided, I still want to do this. Now, how am I going to do it? Well, I had about $16,000. Uh, Bill uh, had about $5,000. I think Bob's dad put in $5,000 uh, for his part. And that de uh, defined the original presentation or the uh, original stock structure of the company. I had 60% of the company, and each of them had 20%. So uh, we moved forward. Matter of fact, here's Bob working on the layout. I moved back to Reno. Uh, we moved into Bob's basement. About that time, Wozniak, Steve Wozniak made a statement, it was in InfoWorld or somewhere, that the industry, the computer industry had matured to the point where nobody could start a computer company in a garage anymore. <laughs> so we were laughing about it, saying, good thing we're in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, uh, started in a basement. Uh, it was very tight, so tight, our desks were literally touching each other. We didn't realize till later on what kind of tension that can create, trying to get work done, but um, we struggled along for uh, several months there. 
uh, basically the two of us, Bill and Bob, Bill, or excuse me, Bob and I in the basement. Bill was doing the uh, system software and BIOS work at home, so uh, he'd be bringing stuff in at different times. But it uh, uh, took us a few weeks, and uh, during that time, uh, essentially 16, 17 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, my girlfriend moved out, uh, put a lot of stress on Bob's marriage. I mean, it, it's a difficult thing to do. If any of you have been through the process of startup, it can be really challenging in a lot of different ways. So. But it's also a hell of a lot of fun. Um, and uh, down to your first clock in 105 days. I actually started this, and it just happened to be the day, uh, August 15, 1981, I was in San Jose, started the schematics layout. That was the day the IBM PC was introduced. 105 days later, we turned up the first clock. We got the first you know, clock signals on the processor and got the, clock, uh, the processor to start ticking. Uh, it, took, uh, it took a couple of weeks uh, before we got the BIOS to boot up, and then right after that, the P system came out. P system was the first operating system. It ended up being included with every computer. Um, the other thing that was real impressive at the time is were the benchmarks. I had predicted, if you will, the benchmarks. Uh, one of the things I was after with it in this system design was to do what Wozniak had done with the 6502, but do it with a 232-bit processor. And the point there is I wanted to get all the performance I could out of the machine. And to do that, I went for hardware refresh. At the time, Sun Computer had built their first machine. They used software refresh. It cut their performance about 25% from the maximum. Uh, our performance uh, overhead for hardware in, in, uh, refresh ended up at just over 2%. In other words, we're getting about 97.5% of 8 megahertz worth of uh, production on the machine. So the benchmarks were extraordinarily good. Another significant factor at the time, uh, people had built uh, bank-switched RAM boards and put it into other computers, and they would emulate disk drives in those RAM boards. So a combination of hardware, and uh, some software allowed to fake RAM drives. Well, for us, RAM disk was just half a page of code. I mean, it was extremely simple because it was, we had a large memory, uh, large addressing space, and the base machine had uh, 512K of memory, which at the time was phenomenal. Uh, the IBM was shipping with 16K, we maxed it out at 64K, and our machine was shipping with up to 512K, and within a few months, we're shipping with a full megabyte. And in those days, it was unheard of to have such phenomenal amounts of memory. Of course, uh, you know, today, my telephone is far more, <laughs> you know, everything's relative. But at the time, it was very impressive. Uh, and it also had, uh, the RAM disk allowed for tremendous performance as well, uh, because we could load all the system stuff. There was enough RAM to load the system software into the RAM disk, and everything went very, very quickly. Uh, at that time, also met a guy named Roger Elton, who ended up becoming a significant player. Roger was an attorney, again, excellent resume, uh, degree from MIT, uh, doctor of jurisprudence from Stanford. Uh, he was one of the top people in the company, he was CPA, he was also a tax attorney. He, uh, he became, ended up becoming an investor, one of our directors, and uh, was there very early in the process. And, uh, helped us a great deal. He's my corporate attorney, essentially. Um, so once we had a prototype running, we had a way to raise more money. We've proven that the design, the design would work. And actually, this machine here is one of the original three. We had enough money to actually have five boards made, and we had enough parts to build three computers, one each from Bob, Bill, and myself. If it didn't work out, we'd at least get a computer out of it. Well, this is one of the three <laughs> machines in that time. And uh, so we had prototypes, we raised some more money. Uh, I'm trying to remember the numbers. Probably, I believe it was around $75,000 for the next phase. Our objective with that was to do our first manufacturing run of 25 units. And we rented a, a space, and uh, this time in a loft, as opposed to a basement, to get more light in. Um, and three weeks later, it uh, became part of a fire. The entire complex burned down. Ours was the last to go, but uh, indeed, Virtually everything was destroyed. Uh, we have, a, have another picture here. This is 